Hello everyone. Welcome to part three of lecture nine. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to price the forward and futures contracts. So let's look at the forward contract first. And the pricing is mostly based on the no arbitrage argument, or the also it's also related to the pricing by replication. Uh, so let's see what that means. So you see, so for example, we have uh, a forward contract, and so we are what we want to enter into a loan position into a forward contract, which allows us to buy one unit of assets could be stock, and it is valued at uh, the as uppercase T um, for price of F, right? So which means we can actually specify or predetermine the price of F uh, whose actual price is the S uppercase T, right? So what happens is that we will also establish a position in the stock and cash. So what, what this means is that uh, since we enter into a forward contract and uh, this is a long position, so we are we are be able to buy something uh, for a specific price. So if the price of the asset increases, then that's a profit for us, right? But if the price drops, then that's a risk for us because we are paying something uh, higher, which is actually uh, less expensive. So in order to hash that risk, we would immediately at day one, uh, at day zero, right? So this is uh, T or day log is T, immediately enter into a short position. Short position meaning we're short by stock, so as to hash the risk. So when we, are in the, when we are in the short position, if the price drops, then there's a profit for us. So the profit will actually hash the resulting a loss from the fourth position. And we will put the rest of the amounts to the cash account to earn the risk-free interest rate. So now the settings that we would like to know what is the price of the fourth contract at day zero, which is uh, day T, just low case T. So let's see how to, how to uh, uh, do the pricing. Now we have three different positions. We can sum it up to form our portfolio, right? So the essentially the no upcharge argument says is that uh, there's no opportunity to upcharge, right? So if we start at day small t uh, with zero amounts in our account, then we should end up with zero amounts uh, at a future date as well, right? There's no free money that will come out of nowhere, right? That is, there's no arbitrage opportunity for us to realize a profit uh, uh, without uh, initial investments, right? So so let's see, let's see uh, how this uh, applies to the pricing. So that's uh, the uh, beginning of the investment horizon, right? So this is uh, locus T. Our value in the in different positions are as follows. So Fourth contract will have zero value because there's uh, nothing, nothing, nothing happens yet, right? So it stays a steal, so it's zero. However, for the stock uh, position, we will go short uh, by one unit, right? So which means that we uh, that that's realizes as a negative uh, as locus T, right? Because uh, we look at the uh, current stock price. Shortage meaning we are short of white stock, which needs to be closed at the end of the uh, the investment period, which is the delivery date. So that's a negative because we're in a short position. However, upon shorting the stock, we will realize uh, uh, we'll receive the amounts uh, ST because that's uh, uh, that means that we borrow stock from somewhere else, but also immediately sell it. So that's called shorting. So shorting gives us a cash amount, which is uh, determined by the price, the current stock, stock uh, spot price of the of the stock. Um, and this money will be saved 
uh, in the uh, cash markets to earn the risk-free interest rate. So naturally, this amount, the cash amount goes to uh, this amount. So this is called the continuously compounded interest rate. So this is continuous compounding, e to the power of r, and then the duration. So uh, upper case t minus lower case t give us the duration of the uh, horizon, and r is the risk-free interest rate. So this is a formula to calculate uh, the future value of the money we have at uh, the small case t, right? <clears throat> so this is just compounding, and as the end of the investment period, we have the S uppercase T uh, negative sign here still. Uh, this means that this is this will be the spot price of the stock uh, at a future date. And this is a position we need to close. For the fourth contract, what happens is that at the future dates uppercase T, we will, since we are in a long position, we will pay something, uh, specify the by the predetermined price, which is F. So F is our unknown quantity. Uh, it's negative because we are paying uh, the amounts to the seller, but also we are receiving uh, an asset. And this asset is valued as uppercase T. So uh, which is the spot price as the delivery date. So this is uh, uh, outflow, this is uh, inflow, and this is a uh, net uh, uh, amount for the fourth position. So what happens is that based on the no arbitrage arguments at both time points, the value of the portfolio should be equal, right? And since day zero, we started, we started with uh, zero money in our accounts. And this is shown by here, so zero at uh, minus sign here and these two would cancel each other. So we start with zero money in our accounts. So based on the no upcharge arguments, the uh, portfolio value at uh, the end of the uh, investment period should also be uh, equal to the initial amounts. So add that up, this S upcharge T would cancel each other. So we have negative F plus the continuously compounded uh, stock price, right? So and that gives us the equation here and we we'll, uh, simply move the terms uh, around. So we have the, uh, the uh, expression for F, which is the price of the fourth contract. So this gives us the uh, price for the fourth contract, uh, given, uh, given this particular uh, horizon investment period here. All right, so now, Intuitively, this just means that if we were to invest in the fourth contract, this is the same. This would be the same as if we were to put some money uh, and uh, to, to the stock markets uh, to buy uh, the the assets, right? Buy the stock, and then uh, and then the stock will earn the risk free interest rate. So, uh, so there's no. So although the, the stock price fluctuates, but essentially uh, at the end of the investment period, the, the terminal price uh, will receive a risk-free interest rate, re interest -free interest rate, which is exactly the same as if this money were invested in the bank, right? Saved in the, in the deposit accounts. Um, all right, so uh, so that's, uh, that's about it. And uh, we can also look at the uh, fair price uh, using the no upcharge argument. So say that we have two scenarios. The price is above these amounts, right? The compounded amounts and below the company amount. So let's see what happens. So if this is the case, which means that the uh, the compounded sub price is lower than the fourth price, then we will always go by the arguments by low sell high. Right. So this this uh, this amount seems to be lower, the cheaper. Then we can actually uh, uh, buy the the stock and then uh, short the fourth contract. So we can so specifically 
become borrowed amounts of ST, lowercase t, and use the money to short a forward contract because that allows us to sell the uh, the units, my units of underlying assets at price F. So by selling uh, this assets, we will realize the total cash inflow of F, right? By this, uh, uh, by, by shorting and selling the assets. And uh, since we borrowed in the initial money, we will need to pay back, right? So this money uh, grows interest and then the with interest, it is this amount that we need to pay back. So uh, after paying back all the interest and the principal, we actually earn a net profits, which is the difference of the two, right? So that's realized uh, profit for us and that's an arbitrage. So on the other hand, if this is the case, if the forward price is cheaper, uh, then it's lower than the uh, compounded uh, asset price, then we can actually uh, go long in the forward contract and then uh, sell the assets, sell the underlying assets for a higher price. So specifically, um, we will uh, we will loan the fourth contracts, right? Loan the fourth contracts at the beginning of the period. And then uh, loan means that we are able to buy the assets uh, for a price of F at time upper T, right? At the same time, we will short one unit of the underlying assets, right? So this gives us a total cash inflow of S small T and we will earn the risk free interest rate uh, to this amount. So this amount is, uh, of course, is higher than the um, than the further price. So what happens is that because we uh, uh, because we are in the in the uh, we we are in a short position, we need to close the short position of the underlying assets, right? Uh, we need then uh, this happens by purchasing Y units of the assets for a price of F, right? Because we went long and a fourth contract which allows us to buy one unit assets and these assets will be used to close the short position because initially we entered into a short position right short one unit of underlying assets at the beginning of the investment period so end of the day, day at delivery dates we would realize a remaining balance which is the difference of the two okay, so that's also established uh, arbitrage, uh, and which means a riskless profit for us. All right, so now let's look at uh, pricing the futures contract. So this formula here uh, uh, is about annual compounding. So it's another form of compounding, uh, but it's just for illustration. So here we have the, uh, Price of the uh, the spot price of the underlying assets, and these are the uh, so uh, so if you were to price the fourth contract, that uh, these terms will go away, right? Using the annual compounding, um, but then we have actual terms here. So ST is the spot price, and R is the uh, interest rates uh, using annual compounding. So we have the actual terms, which is S and C. So S means the uh, annually compounded storage rate, a uh, storage cost, right? Could be 1%, 2%. And we have the storage cost because if we enter into a, a short position to sell some, something, right? Sell an asset. And if it, is, if it is a physical delivery, then we actually need to store or keep these uh, underlying assets until the delivery date. For example, it could be uh, 100 barrels of oil, right? That we need to store these 100 barrels uh, in our yard uh, or in a warehouse and we need to pay the storage fee, right? So this is the cost that actually needs to be added to the price of the futures contract. Now, we also have the uh, convenience yield. So C stands for the convenience yield. It is also uh, annually compounded. So this is minus sign, which is because now, uh, uh, so this is additional interest earned by holding the assets. So for example, it could be uh, the uh, uh, 
uh, if the the world is uh, in short needs uh, in 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 uh, in, uh, uh, in a bigger demand for uh, oil consumption, then the price of the, uh, the oil will increase. Right, so that gives us confidence yield. So the assets you are holding is becoming more valuable. Right, so that's a gain for you. That's a profit for you. So so that means uh, you need to minus it off from the the price you need to pay. Right, so we again we have here the duration uh, on a yearly basis. So it means this term will needs to be analyzed uh, because all the terms are using annual compounding. All right, so that's it for this video, and uh, thanks for watching.